in-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductory offer. See the link in the description to sign up. Nobody thought that Mikel Arteta would ever become a footballer. Born in March 1982 in San Sebastian, as a baby he was diagnosed with a serious heart condition which required surgery, and doctors would tell his parents that their son would never play any sport. But he would come to love football, and at age five, those doctors agreed to merely monitor his condition. And play he did, most often on the beaches near his home in Calle Matia, with a local boy who would grow up to win everything the sport had to offer. Xabi Alonso was five months older than Arteta, but the two became inseparable, honing their touch and technique on the beach. At nine, they would even play alongside one another for Antiguoco, a feeder club for Real Sociedad. But at 15, Arteta had the chance to join the team he'd supported as a boy. Moving to Barcelona may have seemed too good to be true for Arteta, but it was no surprise to those who'd watched him develop. He was one of the smallest players, remembers Antiguoco teammate Alvaro Parra but no doubt the smartest. Barcelona brought him first contact with Pep Guardiola, his idol as a player, and many decades later, his coaching mentor. Arteta would make his debut appearance for Barca's B team as a substitute for Guardiola, but first team chances were limited for teenagers, and in 2001, with Philippe Cocu, Xavi, and Fabio Rockenbach blocking out the light, he joined Paris Saint-Germain on loan. At the time, PSG were under the guidance of Luis Fernandez, a European Championship winner with France in 1984 and one of the finer defensive midfielders of his generation. The club was very different to the one standing in its place today, but it was still one of Europe's most cosmopolitan environments. Fernandez was managing a group which included Maurizio Pochettino and Gabriel Anza, the swaggering flair of JJ Acocha and Ronaldinho, and the combustible talent of Nicolas Anelka. It was an intimidating dressing room, particularly for a 19-year-old, but he survived and grew. Pochettino took Arteta under his wing, and the two retain a friendship which survives to this day. But those early years as a player were semi-nomadic. Arteta's loan in Paris would become a permanent move to Rangers. He would then swap Glasgow for a return to San Sebastian before leaving for England and Everton. First on loan, and then for good. So, before Arsenal and the Emirates, there were changes in style and culture to navigate, with languages to learn and communication skills to develop. It was a time of near constant change, but the anecdotes are familiar and consistent and are indicative of the kind of personality that today, nearly 20 years later, is exerting itself at Arsenal. At Ibrox, Ronald de Boer was struck by the presence of a young player who should have been well outside his comfort zone. I think he was just coming up for 20 at that time but he played with the maturity and tactical discipline of a 30-year-old, De Boer recalled. You can never be certain, but I did get a feeling, even back then, when he was so young, that he had a desire to get into coaching. From one hothouse footballing city to another, via San Sebastian, Arteta would make his name in Liverpool with Everton, and again, show many of the characteristics present today. Alan Stubbs, the former centre-half, remembers Arteta as strong-minded and willing to speak up if he felt something needed to be said. Phil Neville, who spent time in the presence of some of the strongest characters English football has ever known, also observed a rare gravitas in his teammate. People listen to him and respect him. He has that aura. Through Arteta's own recollections, he was an unusually driven player too. In 2009, while in recovery from a cruciate ligament injury, his wife Lorena was pregnant with their first child. Labour was no reason to miss rehab though. Three or four hours after my wife gave birth, he told Arsenal's official website in 2014, I pulled up a treatment table next to her in the hospital and had my physio. She wanted to kill me. But he would play again, returning with some of the best football of his career. He arrived at Arsenal in 2011 as part of Arsene Wenger's response to a dreadful 8-2 defeat to Manchester United. Wenger would eventually make him his captain and, like others beforehand, placed great stock in his character and the example it set. Mikel has a huge influence even when he's not playing, Wenger commented at the time. He is super conscientious, and every morning two hours before training he prepares, and that is absolutely right. Just through his behaviour, his focus is on getting everything right in the team. Like many of his peers, Arteta laid the groundwork for his coaching career while he was still playing. 
As part of his qualifications, he coached Arsenal's under-13s at Hale End during a lengthy injury layoff in 2015. And later in the year, for his A licence, he would coach Wales under-16s through the Victory Shield tournament. And by that time, some semblance of philosophy had started to crystallise too. He already seemed to know what kind of head coach he would be. I will have everyone 120% committed, that's the first thing, he said in a 2014 interview. If not, you don't play for me. It was said lightheartedly and with a smile, but, as Matteo Genduzzi might attest, he meant every word. And he also knew how his teams would play. I want the football to be expressive, entertaining. I cannot have a concept of football where everything is based on the opposition. We have to dictate the game, we have to be the ones taking the initiative, and we have to entertain the people coming to watch us. The people aren't there yet and may not be for a while, but the substance is appearing and Arsenal have already begun to twine around their head coach. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep, and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.